The mangrove forests of Palau have always played an important role in people's lives, providing them with many resources. As a result of this, they have long been respected and were harvested wisely so that even today we have inherited large areas of healthy mangroves throughout these islands. The mangrove forests provide food and shelter for many species of animals and plants, such as the mangrove crab, birds, and fish. Many fish that we see and harvest on our coral reefs, such as rabbit fish, spend the early stages of their lives in the mangroves, while other fish come to the mangroves to feed throughout their lives. Mangroves have also been a source of wood, which is used for fires, as well as for building houses and making spears and fish traps. We still see many summer houses in Palau constructed from the wood harvested in the mangrove forest. The stilt roots of mangroves not only provide shelter for baby fish, but also break the force of the waves and so play an important role in protecting our shore from erosion and flooding. The forest canopy acts as a windbreak and so protects our homes from the forces of extreme weather. The leaves of the mangrove trees drop into the water and provide food for insects, plankton, and fish. Mangroves act as a filter between land and sea, trapping sediment that is washed off with rain and reducing the amount that reaches the ocean. Despite the value of these forests, to both people and other animals and plants, they are being lost at an increasing rate. We are losing touch with traditional knowledge and management practices as we pursue short-term economic gain at the expense of the long-term health of our environment. Throughout Palau today, large areas of mangrove forests are being destroyed by a process called cut and fill, as people build more and more homes and businesses along the coastline. This kind of destruction is irreversible as mangroves are removed and the space behind replaced with earth. In addition to these localized impacts, road building is resulting in the direct clearing of mangrove forests, with roads being built straight through mangrove forests in some states. Increasing agriculture in upland areas can result in soils and pesticides running off the land towards the coast when it rains. Burning of upland vegetation makes the soil less stable and more washes off into streams when it rains. Development projects such as quarrying, if not carefully planned to minimize environmental damage, can result in bare tracts of earth exposed for months or years, which ultimately washes into our waterways and onto our land. Usually, the mangrove forest acts as a barrier and prevents much sediment from reaching the ocean, but when they are removed, red dirt flows straight onto our seagrass beds and coral reefs. This dirt smothers plants and animals and can prevent corals from reproducing, so the impacts may only be noticed after several years. Already, in Airai, where much sediment has been running off the land from the construction of the airport and now the compact road, fishermen are remarking that their reefs are dying and the fish are moving away. Not only does this threaten to destroy the beauty of our coastal environment by making once clear living waters muddy and lifeless, it also has negative impacts on our way of life. Building roads through the mangrove has a double impact. Not only is there the direct loss of forest, but also a road can block tidal circulation. Mangroves rely on oxygen to live like we do. When tidal flow is restricted, as was the case when a causeway was constructed in the state of Mutpang, the mangrove trees do not get fresh water, which is normally brought in by the tide, and they die from lack of oxygen. Now all that remains of a healthy forest are the skeletons, where there used to be a healthy and productive ecosystem. Simple planning to include bridges and culverts can help to maintain water flow to the mangroves. Hi, my name is Alma Rudup Mars. I work for the Ngarmadu Conservation Area as the MPA Program Manager and under the Bureau of Marine Resources. 
My role is to work with the communities um, of Ngurm Lunguing at Pangan Ay Malik on the Ngurm Du Conservation Area, which deals with management of the mangroves, the reefs, and some of the upland watershed area. Mangroves are important because they act as buffer zones. They are needed for preventing uh, sediment runoff from upland areas to the coral reefs. So mangroves are important for uh, local fisheries because they act as uh, nurseries, especially for our uh, young fish and the mangrove crabs that depend on mangrove areas. It's the local people depend on them uh, for food, particularly the reef fishes that we depend on daily for subsistence, and mangrove crabs and uh, um, some shellfish like ndul. In the Ngamdu conservation area, the importance of protecting the mangroves, um, we've put in place a 50 feet buffer zone um, to protect the reefs from sediment runoff from upland activities. If we lose our mangroves, we lose our coastline protection. We also lose um, an important habitat for our fisheries. And we also lose um, uh, an area that protects the reefs from uh, sediment runoff. Mangroves are a state resource, and therefore it is important to protect them. Um, and it's important for each state um, to establish a management plan and put a legislation in place to ensure that the mangroves are not cleared for land for landfill or at present uh, there are impacts like cutting and filling to build houses or businesses in mangroves and also people throwing toxic chemicals and trash straight into the mangroves If you see people throwing trash in the mangroves, tell them to pick it up and dispose of it in a trash can. Plastics can be swallowed by marine life such as fish, turtles and dolphins and can kill them. Metal tins and cans can injure people and pollute our waters.